now Head of Female Development at Wellington Phoenix's Academy. Katie Barrett, great to see you, Katie. As I said, the games are running out for Wellington Phoenix. How important, as they take to the field, is getting some sort of result today? Yeah, I think, like you said, Piney, the Phoenix will need to do everything they can to keep their hopes alive. They have to keep things tight at the back whilst also being composed and lethal in the final third. And back up a good performance against Perth last week against one of the most star-studded sides in the league. Yes, yeah, Sydney FC take to the grass their first ever visit to Porirua Park. And you can see the tail of their tape, the last five matches, all points picked up. Last time out, they had a good win over league leaders, Western United. In fact, if they were to gain victory today, Sydney FC, they would take top spot on the Liberty A-League ladder. Two changes to the Wellington Phoenix side that beat Perth Glory last weekend. Rebecca Lake is out for the season with the ankle injury she picked up in that game. And Isabel Cox drops to the bench. In come Macy Fraser and Manaya Elliott. With three games in eight days, Emma Main and Hayley Davidson arrested. I can see them walking up beside us now. Kate Taylor's back in the squad after missing the last three games. Still no Annalie Longo, though, who continues her recovery from injury. Rihanna Edwards is away for personal reasons, so Amy Danielli is the reserve goalkeeper today. And for Sydney FC, just the one enforced change to the side that beat table toppers Western United last time out. Captain Princess Abini hasn't travelled to New Zealand. She has what's been described as a calf niggle. Her place up front taken by Kaylee Talon Henneker, who earns her first Sydney FC start. Sienna Saveska and Aideen Keane join the bench. Referee is Beck Mackey. Maddie Allen and Maggie Price are the assistants and helping out with the coin toss. That is the delightful eight-year-old Carly Doughty from St. Teresa's School. Her favourite players are Riley Foster, Alex Paulson and Costa Barbarousas from the men's side, although she was telling me before the game that she doesn't like picking favourites. She just likes them all. Her favourite teams are the Wellington Phoenix men and women. Special day for eight-year-old Carly Doughty. The emotion shown at the end of last weekend's game by player of the match, Alyssa Wynnum, was palpable and instructive. It's been a challenging season for one of the undoubted rising stars of the game here in New Zealand. At her best, she can unlock any defence, as she showed last week in masterminding Wellington's win in the distance derby. And Courtney Vine booked her place in footballing folklore at last year's FIFA World Cup when she coolly slotted a now-famous penalty in the Matildas knockout win over France. One of the true stars of the Liberty A League and a player capable of things that very few others have at their disposal. Mariana Speckmeyer, Alyssa Wynnum and Macy Fraser, what a... What an exciting, a potentially exciting attacking triangle with those three players involved, Katie. Yeah, absolutely. I think all three players have a little bit of that technical flair we don't always see in the women's game, and hopefully they can find a way to make that connect in the attacking third for the, for the Phoenix. I'm certainly looking forward to watching those ones combine. Beautiful day in Wellington's northern suburbs. All is in readiness. We're underway at Porirua Park. Wellington Phoenix undefeated here with two wins and a draw in their three previous hosted games here in Porirua. But Sydney FC have won four of the previous five matches between these two. And they know, as I say, that victory here today would take them to the top of the Liberty A-League ladder. But a reshuffling of the Wellington Phoenix's deck both on the starting 11 and on the bench, and Riley Foster just about getting herself into a spot of bother early on with Courtney Vine charging yep. down an attempted clearance. A nervous moment for Riley Foster and for the fans of the home side. Definitely not the start she was hoping for, but maybe it'll just entice Vine to press a little bit more and open up gaps for Foster. There's Kaylee Talon Henniker. Looks like she'll be playing up and down the right early on in her starting debut for Sydney FC. Looks like an energetic and vigorous young player. Goes past Foster initially and has managed to keep that in. Cleared away by Breslin. So 
Kaylee Talon Henniker. You can tell us a bit about her sporting past, Katie? Yeah, well, she's actually been signed as an injury replacement for Fiona Wirtz, who suffered a season ending injury. And Talon Henniker has actually represented the Australian schoolgirls rugby team, which is, is pretty impressive for such a young player, only 18 years old. But I'm expecting to see a lot of pace from her down on that right side. Good stuff. Tug of war between football and rugby union. Football winning out at the moment, and she's been prominent early on. The youngster, Kaylee Talon Henniker. Sydney FC have started the game in the ascendancy, but Fraser and Wynnum look to combine to get Wellington some possession. Here is Talon Henniker again, looking to find Courtney Vine. Michaela Foster with that trademark composure, but does give it away to Chumeth. Her ball forward, though, too far ahead of Talon Henniker, and it'll be a goal kick. I guess this is the trend we can probably expect when a team near the top of the table, even if they're playing away and in such good form, like Sydney FC, are going to try and get on the front foot early, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And Wellington Phoenix shifting to that back three that we've seen over the last couple of rounds. I think that's going to free up a lot of space for Talon Henneker and for Lemon out on the left side. So I'm interested to see how that matches up. It can always be a little bit dangerous, but Sydney love to attack, so I'm sure they're excited. Yeah, interesting to see Courtney Vine playing down the middle as well. That would normally, of course, be Princess Abini's role in this team, but she's not here today, as previously mentioned. So I guess if you're looking for a, a point of the arrow, a number nine, it'll be Courtney Vine, but I, I doubt that she'll play the traditional centre forward role that a player like Princess Abini would. Here she is now peeling away and using that speed of hers to not quite keep that one in. Absolute star of Australian football, the Matildas, the Liberty A-League, Courtney Vine. Real pleasure to have her playing here in Potidua. What a day, what a day for it. It's always beautiful in Potidua, Piney, we know that. Beckmeyer might have got a shove in the back there. Beck Mackey says no. Chumeth with the throw. It's all happening down this near side, the broadcast side in the first three and a half minutes. Wellington will have the chance to make their way into Sydney's half for the first time this afternoon. Alyssa Wynnum is surrounded by Sydney FC players, but it breaks the way of Breslin. Here's Mackenzie Barry, Wellington's leading all-time appearance maker. Mickey Robertson, goals in back-to-back -back games for her. Now Yeber's let this one go, and Vine's through. Just a heavy touch from Courtney Vine. A bit of a mix-up between Barry and Jaber there at the back. But Sydney FC couldn't make it pay. So Rebecca Lake, as we know, Suffered that injury last weekend, won't play again this season. She's been solid at the back in her appearances for Wellington this season. Very much a back three today, isn't it, of Jaber, Barry, Foster. Wellington just having a bit of trouble getting into this game in the first five minutes or so. Breslin, though, with some quick feet, tries to find Elliot. Chumeth is on to her. And away quickly into Vine, who tries to get away from Brazendale. What a uh, what an opportunity for Daisy Brazendale. I think she's just had her 18th birthday, marking up against Courtney Vine this afternoon. Yeah, signed as a scholarship player at the start of the season and has made her way into the starting lineup. Obviously, a couple of absences, but she's slotted into this league absolutely perfectly, and she's definitely one to watch for the future. Nice little move into space by Alyssa Wynnum now can. Brazendale push it on towards Robertson. She can only spec by ahead. Here's Mickey Robertson. She might only have eyes for goal here, Mickey. Taken away from her, but Elliott should be able to haul that one in. She'll go back to Foster to reset. And towards the penalty arc, but cleared by the Sky Blues. Brazendale picks it up again, brings Foster in again. She sets off with Lemon in hot pursuit. Mickey Robertson into the penalty area, looking for a third goal in as many games. Deflects, though, into the hands of Jada Wyman. Good to see Mickey Robertson getting involved up and down the right. Yeah, 
This is Abby Lemon for Sydney FC. Vine comes to help. Little one two. Here's Lemon. The angle's pretty tight, and Foster fumbles it and makes the save out towards the edge of the area. It's there for Vine. Courtney Vine into space. Good tackle. Nice piece of defensive work by Manaya Elliott. Good. There's a good energy about the game early, isn't there? There's some real attacking intent from the Sky Blues. And Daisy Brazendale's going to need some treatment here. We can all catch our breath a little bit, Katie. Yeah, it looks like a KG affair already. Brazendale just, just looking to hold her elbow over the last two or so minutes, waiting for that ball to go out. I think it was when she slipped through Robertson, just carried a little bit of a knock and hasn't been able to recover since then. Here's the little one-two with Abby Lemon. And it was a save by Foster, but she kind of lost sight of where the ball was just for a second. Courtney Vine had a bit of trouble controlling on the edge, so wasn't able to fashion the room for a shot. This would be a blow for Paul Temple if he had to make a substitution this early. Fourth appearance of the season for Daisy Brazendale, who's now up into a sitting position, which is good news. You thought she got a whack on the elbow, Katie. Oh, she's pointing to it now, just in, maybe on the forearm there. Yeah, it was definitely carrying her arm a little bit funny after that initial challenge up on the other end of the pitch. And you could tell she was wanting that ball to go out, but it didn't quite find its way. But good to get a little bit of a sting out of the game anyways and take her time to hopefully come back and get back to what's been a promising start for the youngster. Made her debut on this ground, didn't she, against Canberra United the last time. Wellington played here. It seems an age ago, doesn't it? They seem to have been on the road forever, Wellington Phoenix. Just the second time in 2024 that they have played at home. And what are we now? Mid-March. They do they have a run of home games to finish. We're back here on Wednesday for midweek football in the Liberty A-League as the Phoenix welcome Adelaide United. Daisy Brazendale is looking okay to continue when she's welcomed back on. Sydney FC looking to build. This is Mackenzie Hawksby. Brazendale back into the action. Gets another heavy collision for her troubles, but is up and about and ready to go, which is good to see. Long from Thompson. Looking for Lemon, who's done well, but couldn't find the pass. The connections between Lemon and Vine, and we saw Talon Henneker early in the piece. They look like a dangerous attacking trio, even without Princess Abini in the mix today. Yeah, incredibly dangerous, those three, and it looks like Juric's instructions are very clear. Not much defensive responsibility, and go 1v1 at the back against the Wellington Phoenix. It will free up Wynnum and Fraser down the other end, though, so it's a little bit of a game of cat and mouse. Manaya Elliott plays it forward. Nice touch off by Speckmeyer. Robertson's in space on the far side. Will that fighter at will? Mickey Robertson nipped in, took it away from her defender. Now she's in a battle with McLean. Player down for Sydney FC. We'll carry on though for the meantime. Macy Fraser. Breslin. Macy Fraser on the edge. Less favoured left foot. Sydney FC can't clear it now. I wonder whether the ref. Beck Mackey might stop things now. It's going to roll out. That is a knee, I think. And you hate to think the worst, don't you, Katie? But that does not look good. Just trying to identify who it is who's gone down. It looks like it's Fenton there who's gone into that challenge against Robertson. Oh, she just got her foot caught in the turf here, didn't she? And it may have twisted her knee awkwardly. You hope for just a, a little twist and nothing worse. Knee injuries have been far too much of a talking point this Liberty A-League season already, haven't they? Yeah, and especially with Sydney FC, you've got Taylor Ray on the pitch who's come back from her third ACL rupture and I'm sure she'll be there supporting Kirsty Fenton through this. 
but you do hope for the best, although it's not looking too good for Sydney right now, and no. for Fenton, most importantly. No, we just keep our fingers crossed and our eyes on her. She's being supported by a couple of her teammates at the moment, including Taylor Ray, as you say, Katie, who knows all about this sort of injury. Kirsty Fenton approaching her half century of A-League matches. It's been a big part of this team this year. You can see the physio there signalling that a change is going to have to be made. So this is a real, real blow for Sydney FC, but mostly for Kirsty Fenton. Yeah, she's definitely a star for the future, Fenton. A couple of national team call-ups, both age group and international, and she's certainly one for the future and someone we don't want to see out of the game. So hopefully it's not as serious as we initially hoped. It looks like Connors is getting ready on the sideline to go on. Not sure that's a like-for-like -like change, so we'll have to see what Sydney FC decide to do. Yeah, Shay Connors is more of an attacking yeah, player, isn't she? It'll be her eighth appearance, her fifth from the bench. And unfortunately for Kirsty Fenton, she is very, very slowly making her way off. This is just a terrible sight. Completely inadvertent as well. She was going in to challenge Mickey Robertson. Robertson met the ball past her, and Kirsty Fenton just got her foot caught in the turf and as she fell it was so awkward and we can only wish that this isn't as bad as it first appears for Kirsty Fenton. Confirmation of the change with Shay Connors into the action. And we'll watch how Sydney FC recalibrate themselves. Kirsty Fenton was playing on the left side of the back four for Sydney FC. And we'll see who pops up over there once they reconfigure things. It might be Abby Lemon as it is, is dropped back into that left sided position in the back four. So after a lengthy stoppage, we're underway again. Jaber. This Talon Henneker plays it forward. Courtney Vine looks up and sees Mackenzie Hawksby off on a run. Hawksby brings it down. It's a lovely pass from Vine. Yeah, so Shay Connors has gone across there to the left side of the front three. Abby Lemon, who's in the action now, has dropped a bit deeper. It's fallen the way of Breslin in midfield. Wynnum. Nice little move into space. Can't find the feet of Manaya Elliott. And Talon Henneker unable to control. Well, an injury like that's kind of taken the air out of things, hasn't it? I know both sets of players will be probably affected by what they've seen. Yeah, it's always difficult to see not only your teammate go down, but any female footballer at this moment. It's definitely an area we've got a lot of attention to. As I mentioned before, though, it's very much a game of cat and mouse, the way these two formations are setting up. So it probably does give both sets of staff a little bit of a chance to decide how they're going to counter-attack each other. McLean and Speckmeyer come together. It's picked up by Taylor Ray, who rakes one across towards Lemon, but Robertson has nipped in. And off she goes, Mickey Robertson. Inside, outside, Mickey Robertson. Energy personified from the pocket rocket, that is Michaela Robertson. I think she's um, on the end of a spray there from Speckmeyer, who probably wanted the pass, but Mickey Robertson only had eyes for goal. It's definitely that switch side for the Wellington Phoenix that they're able to find quite often. 
like I said, it's a front three versus back three for the Wellington Phoenix, which means that the wing-back role of Robertson and Elliott, they're very, very free, especially on the far side. And if they can keep getting them in the game, they're going to create chances. First corner of the contest. Breslin lines it up. It's very deep, and in fact, too deep from Hope Breslin. Goes behind without any player able to get on the end of it. So not the set-piece delivery that she was after, and she holds the hand up in apology. Here's Connors. Breaks the way of Sydney FC. Foster steps in ahead of Talon Henneke. Speck my appeals away, and that one has drifted out. Vine, what a touch, lovely touch into the path of Hawksby. Goes for the return. Look at that speed from Courtney Vine. Aiming across the six yard area and up and over her own crossbar from Jay, but her pace is such a weapon, isn't it, Courtney Vine? Yeah, her pace is absolutely lethal in there. But what I do like about her playing in that central forward role is the ability to combine with Hawksby, who we know is a great technician of the football, able to play that final pass. And Sydney are looking dangerous on the other end as well. It's real crunch time for finals football, and both teams are attacking a lot. Hawksby will take the resulting corner. Sydney's first of the afternoon. Drills it towards the end. Vine! What a goal from Courtney Vine! That would light up any football arena anywhere in the world. Mackenzie Hawksby, it was a set move, a drilled pass to the edge, and without a second's thought, Courtney Vine has put her foot through it and put Sydney FC into a 1 0 lead. And if there were any signs of dropping out of this game after the injury, Courtney Vine has literally put them away. It's great technique, no keeper saving that, and she's put it right into the bottom left. Sydney are in this game, and they're not giving up. What a finish from Courtney Vine, her eighth goal of the season. She is Sydney FC's leading goal scorer, and I'm not sure too many this season would have been more eye-catching than that. Wellington, though, they've had their chances. Mickey Robertson's been prominent. So they won't be panicking just yet. Still early in the game. But you talked about Mackenzie Hawksby's ability to find players. Presumably you were talking mainly about general play, but from the set piece as well. Just a lovely drill pass straight to the feet of Vine, who made no mistake. Yeah, clear connection between those two, and they're going to have to be held together from the Phoenix if they want to have a chance at keeping their finals in football alive. Is Fraser steps away from a would-be tackler and then the ball the outside of her foot didn't quite go where she planned but you could see what she was trying to do Macy Fraser a robust challenge by Chumath who's in there trying to win it for Sydney FC win him and I'll come back for, I think it was the first foul. So Sydney FC have now scored first 11 times this season. They've won eight and drawn two of the previous 10. So they go pretty well when they go one nil up. Phoenix have conceded first nine times now. A win, a draw, and six defeats in the previous eight. As I say, they'll be encouraged by... Some early half chances. And a set piece now for Michaela Foster to address. Straight into the head of Kaylee Tallon Henneke. Go get, go get, go get. Nair Elliott with some trickery trying to get away from Chumeth. Kenzie Barry's going to win that one. Going to fall to Ray. Lemon now Connors slides it into the inside left channel Riley Foster coming out really nothing at all Riley Foster could do for the goal was there Katie and against a crowded penalty area anyway at set piece time and it came through a bit of a crowd of bodies but 
So it's just so well struck by Courtney Vine. Yeah, it really was. And the attention around Foster really did create that space for Vine. But it's, it's star-like technique that's put it away. And we're really lucky to just watch a player like her play in this league. Good robust defending by Wellington. Diffuse the latest opportunity. Wellington will also be encouraged by their form at home. They've uh, certainly got better results on home soil than across the Tasman. Five wins from their seven home games, just the one defeat. Well, attack down the left again. Shay Connors has got some space to work with. Vine in the area, but. Pass is a misdirected one. Flicked on by Speckmeyer. Jada Wyman can be put under a bit of pressure from Mariana Speckmeyer and passes the test without any problems. Jada Wyman. Just about nipped in there, Mickey Robertson. Yeah, and it's great initial skill to beat the press up, Speckmeyer, but she needs to do better there with the detail of pass. If Robertson gets that one, she's away, and Phoenix have a chance on goal. Two games being played in the Liberty A League right now. Melbourne Derby is going on as we speak. Melbourne Victory and Melbourne City. The Mariners and Canberra United are underway in about 35 minutes as well, with Western United and Newcastle doing battle at around, a bit, around about 6 o'clock tonight. So the shape of the table will look very different in a few hours from now. Breslin. Now, Elliot under pressure from Tori Chumeth. And Chumeth does well. And that'll be off Monair Elliott last, I think, for a Sydney FC throw. Good battles going on in midfield. And players seeking space. Brazendale has Robertson with her. She can't get away this time. I'm sure when Abby Lemon arrived here, she didn't expect to be playing at left back, <laughs> having a marauding Mickey Robertson to deal with this afternoon. She's probably hoping to do the marauding herself. But needs must for Sydney FC. Yeah, make it tough, yours, my guy. Don't let him look up there. Yep, yep. There you go. Fraser, clever move into space. Win him. See Speckmeyer and Robertson outside. There is Lemon and Robertson, the two 14s together again. Lemon does well to force Mickey Robertson into a bit of a cul-de-sac. It hasn't gone out, so Phoenix will look to rebuild. Ray, though, does well to win it off Brazendale. Now, Matt Barry hasn't quite got the contacts he was hoping for there. Courtney Vine has stepped in. Barry has quickly recovered. Wellington will clear that one. Hacked away by Breslin. Wynnum. The confidence has well and truly returned. Alyssa Wynnum. Nice ball by Breslin for Fraser. Grayson Dowling can't quite find Robertson. It was looking promising, but just broke down there. Here's Connors. She's got a bit of pace. And was that a foul on Grayson in the penalty area? She certainly thinks so. The trailing leg. Daisy Grayson is certainly making the point.
Yeah, and it's well stood up by Brazendale. Connors just carries through and takes that far league away. It's definitely a foul there, but happy to see play on. Chaba thought about trying to get away from Courtney Vine. Instead goes back to Foster. Mariana Speckmeyer, a bit of a lone ranger up top at the moment. Winham, though, almost got her foot on that. So the FC do well to pass through Wellington's press. Here is Talon Henneker. Foster with a defending to do. And Talon Henneker's delivery, not what she hoped. Feels like both sides are really trying to play a possession-based game. There's some tight spaces in midfield, Cady, but when that space is there, enjoying the little passing movements that are happening with both sets of players. Yeah, both teams are just struggling to connect that final pass or the pass before the final pass, but there's been really promising side, signs from both sides. I think the free midfield is often going to be the key theme in unlocking the opposition. We've seen it a few times with Wynnum and Fraser, and we've seen it a few times with Hawksby and Ray. So those players are going to be influential in creating attacking chances. Robertson decides not to take on Lemon this time. Tried to find Wynnum. Jabers in a foot race again with Connors. Breslin for Speckmeyer, who lets it go. Clever from Mariana Speckmeyer. All by herself, though, with three defenders there. Gets the shot away, deflected into the arms of Jada Wyman, but Mariana Speckmeyer had to do it all herself and managed to fashion an effort on goal. Yeah, to be 1v3, she's done very, very well there. Love the individual flair to turn and gets around the claim very well and look it's gonna be hard to be Wyman from there but I like the creation of the chances now again just creating those connections before that final pass yep there are little slivers of encouragement for Wellington they certainly haven't taken a backward step since going one nil behind Our possession stats show a fairly even contest in the first 28 minutes. And right on cue, there they are. Courtesy of our terrific graphics team, 52% possession in favour of Wellington, 48 Sydney FC's way, so a very even contest in terms of possession of the football. Courtney Vine has the goal that has Sydney into a 1-0 lead. Another set-piece situation for the visitors. Vine with the header! My oh, goodness me, it was almost another absolutely spectacular goal, this time from the head of Courtney Vine. Yeah, and she's someone you've always got to be worried about facing the wrong direction but still gets a header on goal. I'm not sure if that's going in or not, but Foster makes sure just in case. But again, it's another set piece and the Phoenix will need to be switched on for this one and they definitely can't leave Vine and Marked in the box. Well, she's um, taken up a, a more traditional position this time, Courtney Vine. It'll again be Mackenzie Hawksby to take the corner. Across the six out area, there is Vine. Speckmeyer wins the header. Got the head of Lemon over there, but she tracks it down. Back into the area, it's Courtney Vine again. You can see Barry doing the defending, scrambled away by Wellington. Not all the way though. And sliding in. And getting a bang on the head for her trouble was Jaber. Manaira Elliott charging through the middle. She's a bit isolated at the moment, but she's got Speckmeyer outside and brings her into the game now. A number of Wellington shirts forward. Taylor Ray tracking back and puts it out for a throw. As I say, there are signs of encouragement for Wellington fans after half an hour. Yeah, they definitely shouldn't be giving up on this one. I think when they're able to complete those first few passes and unlock the other side, like we're seeing, they look really promising. I don't know if it's Speckmeyer we want to see rolling out wide. We'd rather see her in the box. But again, they've got territory, and hopefully they can put together a chance here. It's clever play at the back by Abby Lemon. Courtney Vine has got away from Mac Barry, but had that gone out, it had, so... It's 
perhaps fortunate for the Phoenix because Vine was off and all alone. As he touches in the opposition box, double the number for Sydney FC. And Wynnum looking to add to that metric by breaking forward. Speckmeyer gets a lucky rebound. Robertson's going to track this one down, just about does, and I think it'll all end in a goal kick. So Mickey Robertson was a goal scorer in the 5-3 defeat by Melbourne Victory a couple of weeks ago. She also scored the crucial second against Perth Glory last weekend. <laughs> Fraser finds Wynnum. And Breslin. Nice quick feet from Breslin. Will Wynnum get that? Not quite. Breaks to Foster. Melissa Wynnum was fouled. Taylor Ray doesn't necessarily agree with Beck Mackey's adjudication, but a free kick it'll be. And it's clever from Wynnum there. Again, I think Ray's a little bit unlucky. But Wynnum just does enough to get her body in the way. She knows she's not going to be able to do much with that ball. Gets her knee in the way and attracts the foul. And Wellington Phoenix have another chance, and more importantly, have another chance to keep Courtney Vine away from the ball. It's Callum Holmes, bottom of screen. The Phoenix's assistant coach just issuing instructions to Fraser and Breslin. A left footer from Breslin or a right footer from Fraser? Just a throng of players assembled on the edge of Sydney's penalty area. Foster's there, Speckmeyer's there. Robertson buzzing about. It is going to be Fraser right footed. And hit it back across the six-yard area by Speckmeyer, but flag up. So it fizzles out for Wellington Phoenix. Clever from the attacker. Converted now to a left back. Wynnum's in there winning it. Now, well, Lissa Wynnum. Breslin now back facing her own goal. Barry and Jaber. Nice again from Wynnum, who's starting to really find her feet in this game. Breslin is to switch it out towards Robertson. Long ball towards Vine, it hits her on the back. And Foster clears. Not all the way though, here's Hawksby. Talon Henneker. Quick feet from Talon Henneker. Quicker feet from Mickey Foster, another corner. Coming the way of the Sky Blues, it'll be their third of the afternoon. Hawksby to take. The call is away. It's not away. And Chumeth, I think, was climbing highest there, looking to get her head on it. No goals yet this season for Tori Chumeth. She sensed her first one there. Sydney have used the right side of their attacking quadrants or segments fairly heavily. It's down the left, they'll go this time though. Didn't come together for Shay Connors. Just a 
battle for possession in midfield at the moment. Talon Henneker will keep this one in. Again, Mickey Foster will do the defending with help from Elliott. And good defending from Mickey Foster. Now, Riley Foster has gone down here, so we're going to have a brief stoppage while she's attended to. Get the feeling we're going to have about 10 minutes added at the end of the half, Katie, for the injury earlier on, of course, to Kirsty Fenton. And now another stoppage as Riley Foster is attended to. Amy Danielli on the bench today for Wellington Phoenix, the reserve goalkeeper, yet to debut for the side. What can you tell us about her? Yeah, Amy's come to the Wellington Phoenix Academy last year. Uh, previously played at Auckland United in the National Women's League. Represented New Zealand at the Under-17 World Cup in India as the number one goalkeeper for, for her country. So she's got a lot of experience, even though she's young. I think she'll be excited. She'll be a little bit nervous at the prospect of going on. But nonetheless, these young players are exciting and opportunities are opportunities. Although we hope Riley Foster's OK, we know that the Phoenix would still be in good hands with Danielli. Well, the last time we had a goalkeeper come off the bench here, she saved a penalty, didn't she? <laughs> Brianna Edwards dramatically against Canberra United when Riley Foster was sent off rather mysteriously that day. But Brianna Edwards came on and saved the penalty. Foster's OK, by the way, which is the good news. No Brianna Edwards today. She may well be watching on from afar. So we're going to resume with the throw for the Phoenix down by their corner flag. It did look like the Wellington Phoenix players were quick to head into Temple and get a couple of instructions. So you do wonder if there was a tactical stoppage in play. So let's give a little bit of a look out. Is there some tactical differences in what the Phoenix do to close out this first half? Vicky Foster was looking for some sort of option. She gets it from Breslin. Can't keep the ball in the field of play, Mickey Foster. Barry tries to thread a pass to Robertson. It's cut out by Sydney FC, who now bring Abby Lemon into the game. Hawksby. Lemon again. Cross towards Vine. She tried to flick it towards goal. Mac Barry with some really good defending for Wellington. Lemon again. Hawksby again. Connors. And not the cross she was after. The referee Beck Mackey is going to have a word to Mickey Robertson here. I wonder whether that would maybe just a a word or two that wasn't appreciated by Beck Mackey from Mickey Robertson. Yeah, there was a little bit of a late connection on Connors earlier. I was surprised that Mackey went back to speak to Robertson. Robertson didn't look like she minded too much for the feedback. Beck Myers dropping deep to try and win these headers for her side. Yes, Speckmeyer again. Can she bring this down? Just a heavy touch, but she's battling away for possession and wins it. And Ira Elliott's going to put pressure on Tori Chumeth here. Been impressed with Daisy Brazendale. Like the way she goes about things. Genuine number six sitting there, can play 360 degrees. Looks to play with a promising future. Yeah, I think with Taylor out, Brazendale's just slotted right into that position. She's incredibly clean with her technique. Gets the ball, gives it to other players like Fraser, like Wynnum. Doesn't need to be the star of the game, but naturally stands out just because of how consistent she is with the ball. Definitely one to watch for the future. Steady stream of advice coming the way of the Sydney players from coach 
Ante Juric. He's overseen a pretty successful season for this team. You might have seen the score flash up earlier when we were in the injury break. Goalless as we approach the end of the first half between Melbourne Victory and Melbourne City. Here's Talon Henneker. Across the six-yard area, and in it goes, and it'll be an own goal, I think. Talon Henneker was the architect of it. Tiana Jaber, I think, may have got the final touch. The most important thing as far as Sydney FC are concerned is that they've gone into a 2-0 lead late in the first half. And that'll go down, I'm sure, as an own goal for Tiana Jaber. Yeah, and it's good initial defending from Barry. Forces the ball out wide, but it looks like a little bit of a mix-up and Jaber's just got herself facing the wrong way. And it's always hard to clear when you're facing the wrong way or facing towards your goal. And she'll be absolutely gutted with that because the Phoenix were looking like they were coming back to, into this game, but they've got a bit of a mountain to climb now. So Kaylee Talon Henniker getting the plaudits from her team, putting the ball into the corridor of uncertainty in the six-yard area. And the unfortunate Tiana Jaber diverting it into her own net. So there is work to do now for Wellington Phoenix. If they're to get anything from this game against a very, very good Sydney FC side. up on this near side for offside against Shay Connors. So I guess it's important now for Wellington not to let their heads drop. It'd be easy to become a little bit uh, frustrated and annoyed by the concession of a second goal so close to half time but there's a whole 45 minutes to play. They must believe that they can find a way back. back through Connor. She thought she was rugby tackled by Mac Barry. No, says referee Beck Mackey. defending deep in their own territory. We're told there's going to be a minimum of seven added minutes at the end of this first half, due mainly to the long stoppage in play while Kirsty Fenton was attended to. Sydney finishing the first half strongly. Here's Vine in the area. Good defending from Mackenzie Barry. Really important. Defending from the football firm defender. It's confirmation of the extra seven minimum at the end of this first half. Fraser does well to win the header. Finds Winneman space. Robertson's out on the right. Speckmeyer through the middle. Out left is. Manai Rally at Wynnum was not fouled, says referee Mackey, but they'll carry on through Breslin. Mackey in the hole first, in the hole first. Nice play from Breslin, but good tenacious defending from Talon Henneke. Fraser, the drop of the shoulder we've come to know and enjoy. Nipped away though, and Sydney FC with a chance to break through Vine. Brayson Dale trying to keep up. Play forward towards Connors. Connors is in the area, but so too is Mickey Foster. Only as far as Courtney Vine. Hawksby, Mackenzie Hawksby deflected. And 
happily for Riley Foster. The deflection probably took it closer to her than further away. Foul in the centre circle on Mariana Speckmeyer from Charlotte McLean. So can Wellington fashion a chance or two in the added minutes at the end of the first half? Elliot and towards oh. Grayson Dart, who'd made a run from deep. Make it tough, Kelly. Oh. Fraser wins the header. Good control by Wynnum. She and Fraser combine well. Now Breslin. Breslin shoots from a long way out. Wyman. Well, it was a difficult save to make, and I actually think she did pretty well with that. Nice soft hands. So it wasn't pushed out into the path of the on-running Robertson. Yeah, and it's good play from the Phoenix again, unlocking the opposite side of the field seems to work. And Brislin does trouble one in a little bit there. It takes that nasty little bounce before she's able to get hands to it, but no follow-up runs quick enough. Nice ball by Foster into a pocket of space for Breslin. Fraser. Tumeth deals with it, but only as far as Alyssa Wynnum. And it wouldn't quite come down for her. It actually looked like it might. But Alyssa Wynnum's shot just a little bit off. Yeah, Sydney are just struggling to pick up the role of the free 10, we call it. Macy Fraser, Alyssa Wynnum, able to find little pockets to receive the ball. And again, if that drops a little bit more, the Phoenix are back in this game. Can they fashion up a chance right before the end of this half? I'm not too sure, but they'll definitely want to before they head into the sheds. Breslin wins the header. Breaks the way of Vine. Talon Hennick is off on a run and found by Vine. Nice control by Talon Hennecker. Into the area. Tracked all the way by Foster. It'll be another Sydney FC corner, though. It's a good battle, that. Talon Henneker and Foster. Yeah, and again, lots of individual battles happening. Sydney just leaving their front three to go against the Phoenix back three. And they've got speed to burn up front. So Foster will definitely be busy. We've already seen Jay Byrne very busy as well. So fourth corner for Sydney FC. All of them taken by Mackenzie Hawksby. Towards the near post this time. They've got plenty of tricks. And set moves at corner kick time, haven't they? That one towards Connors at the near post. And the, just, it's just the ability of Mackenzie Hawksby to hit targets. Just so dangerous for Sydney FC. Here she is again. And Foster this time gets it at the second attempt. She's such a danger, isn't she? Mackenzie Hawksby at set piece time. Yeah, she's a great manipulator of the ball, able to find players every single delivery. The Phoenix, on the other hand, haven't been able to do so with set pieces. Again, Mariana Speckmeyer wins the header, but it doesn't find a teammate. Now they've got it again, Wellington through Fraser. Robertson sleeves it behind and Lemon mops up. Industrial challenge there by... Jaber on Connors. Yes, it's definitely pushing the back from Jaber. But she's done well to respond to the own goal. She's stuck in the game and stuck to individual battles. But she doesn't want to give away the foul there. They need the football. Not too much on that one. From McLean. Again, Speckmeyer wins the header. She's won several in the first half. Barry takes it away from Vine. 
Robertson and Liam in another battle. Robertson wins this particular one. Off goes Mickey Robertson. Win him inside. Sydney do well to snuff it out as we move into the seventh added minute. And that's going to be tricky for Barry to deal with, especially with Vine on her shoulder. And she passes the test. Matt Barry and draws the foul from Courtney Vine. And that is greeted with a loud reaction, shall we say, from Yellow Fever. We're here in good numbers as always. Yeah, and it's great defending from Barry. She doesn't quite have the same pace as Vine does, but she gets her body in the way between Vine and the ball, and she's defended that absolutely world classly. Yeah, Mackenzie Barry, she's got her work cut out, but she's been up to it for the most part today. Maybe one more chance for Wellington is there. No one's broken up. Maybe one more chance for Sydney FC. Connors pushes it past Jaber and sets off Shay Connors. Jaber does well to keep up. And that has come off Jaber last. Will there be time for the corner? There will. Well, the pace of Sydney FC's players, I was going to say their front players, but a lot of their players, it's a real feature, isn't it, of the way they play the game? Definitely, and there's so many individual matchups on the field, and it's tired body language from the Phoenix. They've been sprinting after the front three of Sydney all day, and look, these individual battles sometimes can lead to reward, but they can also lead to a lot of tiredness, so Temple might need to look to his bench. Corner taken away is the call. And Vine with the shot, it left her boot and looked destined for the back of the net. It's the last action, though, of this first half, and Courtney Vine has been front and centre for Sydney FC. She scored a cast-iron contender for goal of the week in the Liberty A-League. No doubt that'll pop up on socials during the week. Tiana Jaber, unfortunately, diverting one into her own net for Wellington. So as we go to the break here at Porirua Park, it's Sydney FC, the visitors, ahead 2-0 over Wellington Phoenix.
Half time here in Ponydua. Plenty of uh, punters enjoying some late afternoon sunshine on the southern bank here at Ponydua Park. Picnic blankets are uh, well and truly in evidence. But a half time refreshment as well for the good crowd that's gathered here. Lots of Phoenix scarves haven't been waved quite as vigorously as perhaps they would have hoped. Sydney FC with a 2-0 lead at the break and the first was an absolute belter from Courtney Vine. Yeah, a player you definitely don't want to leave free in the box and it's a world-class finish from a world-class player. Volleys that one straight into the bottom corner. Nothing Foster can do with that one. Yeah, it's just the latest in a highlights reel for Courtney Vine. And then we had the second goal and the creator was Kaylee Talon Henneker and it was the unfortunate Tiana Jaber who just got herself into the wrong position as you said during commentary Katie. Yeah just facing the wrong way and it hits that foot and her body's only facing towards goal in that moment. There's one way the ball can go. She'll be absolutely gutted but she still looked very very strong into the in the defensive moments so she'll be wanting to continue her job while the Phoenix do a little bit more magical things down the other end Piney. Let's have a look at some of the key numbers from the first half. Well, the Wellington Phoenix have had more of the ball. It's what you do with it, though, when you have it, that counts the most, obviously. And you can see the shots on target, four for Sydney FC, just a couple for Wellington Phoenix. They haven't quite created, I don't think, as much as they would have hoped with the position that they've had. No, and if you look at the final third entries there, they're just struggling to get into the areas that matter the most. They've had a couple of shots from range. But touches in the opposition box, only four to Sydney 17, and I think that's what we're really starting to see. Yeah, it's quite a, uh, quite a stark stat there, isn't it? Mickey Robertson has enjoyed a good run of recent form. A couple of goals, as we mentioned, in the last couple of games, and she's had a bit of real estate to run into down that right-hand side. Abby Lemon has had to slot into that left-back position with the unfortunate injury to Kirsty Fenton, and Mickey Robertson's been... Uh, been up for it this afternoon. Yeah, and it's that switch side pass that the Phoenix are playing that are able to free up the wing backs, but we're seeing it most with Robertson. Again, Lemon not ready to play on that side, so maybe that's a little bit of an area the Phoenix can exploit, but they're just going to need to connect better if they really want to do it properly. This is the first time she's played for Wellington at Potidua Park, Mickey Robertson. She's, she said in uh, her media during the week she was looking very much forward to playing at Potidua Park for the first time and she certainly seems up for it. We've seen Courtney Vine's goal but she's been in and around and a constant threat right from the first minute, Katie. Yeah, Vine just sniffs blood at any chance she can and you know she's a great player for the Matildas but she's an even better A-League player and one that we're just lucky to be able to watch shine. Not only does she do a lot of magical work with the ball, but she does a lot of work without the ball as well. And the Phoenix have to stay on their toes at all times. Yeah, she just seems to find a way to make things happen in the attacking third, whether it's a shot or a pass like that, or even a header. We don't associate her normally with headed goals, but it's that goal that really caught the eye this afternoon and got things going for the Sky Blues. She is their talisman some uh, famous faces on the bank there. Ruben Love, Hurricanes fullback there, enjoying himself in the sunshine here in Porirua. Good to see uh, a fellow tenant out at the NZCIS in Upper Hutt supporting the Phoenix women who are looking for goals, as will those fans in the stands. Halftime here. It's 2-0 to Sydney FC back for the second half after this.
Welcome back to Ponydoa Park. Halftime here between Sydney FC and Wellington Phoenix. Sydney FC have made their way back out. Wellington Phoenix still getting their final instructions. Now, here is a live ladder for you with this game going on and also the Melbourne Derby. So, as things stand, Sydney FC would go to the top with the three points they currently possess. Melbourne City and Melbourne Victory are locked at nil all at half time. So, you can see their respective positions. City on 35, Victory on 33. The Phoenix would stay on 22. And following this game, they only have three matches left. So nine points available to them, which could only get them to 31. And the Western Sydney Wanderers currently occupy sixth place with 30. The Mariners have also scored a goal against Canberra United. That game has just kicked off. So the shape of the ladder changes here and there. But I guess the important part of it all is that Wellington will be desperate to try and get something out of this game because it does make it pretty difficult when there's only nine points left on the table after today, Katie. Yeah, and sometimes that simplifies things. And if we have a look, Breslin is a key player to making that happen. She's moved to the sixth role. It's not extremely common to see her in that defensive midfield role, but she adds a little bit of individual flair and her and Brazendale are complementing each other well. And again, it's that switch side or being able to use each other to find the opposite side not only get them into the attacking third, but also in positions where we want to see them in and around the penalty box, which we know they've struggled to meet. Couple of goals so far this season for Hope Breslin. Wouldn't she love to add another or a couple more, perhaps? Crowd wait expectantly. There is Hope Breslin. No changes that we've been made aware of for either side at the start of the second half. Paul Temple has got some options at his disposal, though. Are we likely to see maybe Isabel Cox, Zoe McMeekin? She's been a bit of a uh, an all-purpose player for Wellington this season. Katie? Yeah, there's a couple of options that you can put into those wide areas because we know they're key for this game. Phoenix need three goals. Two's not going to cut it, I don't think. I, I think they need to go for it. And the more attacking options they can bring on to this game, the better their chances are. I think Robertson's done well. I think Elliot's done well. But again, if we can just continue to see a little bit more threat from the Phoenix in those wide areas, I think they'll keep their chances alive and hopefully find the ball in the end they want to find it in. Just hearing of a second goal for the Mariners in their game against Canberra United. They've only been going about seven minutes, so the Mariners well and truly in control there. That would take them, if they were to hold on, and it's only early in the game, up to 34 points. So... As I say, there's all sorts of games going on concurrently. 
match officials have made their way back out. They were last to arrive. The teams were there saying, where's our referee? Beck Mackey has made her way out. 45 minutes for the Phoenix to find her way back. Beck Mackey gets us underway in the second half. Sydney in sky blue attacking the goal to left of screen. That is the northern end of Whanitua Park. Wellington Phoenix in their dark strip today. Attacking the goal to our right. That is down towards the south. I think you're right, Katie. The intent has to be there nice and early from Wellington, but it could be there from Sydney FC. Here's Courtney Vine. Danger here. Real danger here. Hawksby, good save by Foster. And Mac Barry's going to clear it, is she? Well, an early chance inside the first 30 seconds for Mackenzie Hawksby, really, to put this one beyond the reach. You'd have to think of Wellington. I'll come again. There's Vine. And well, they sort of were passing it to one another in the penalty area there, and eventually it's a goal kick, but a warning shot early for Wellington Phoenix. Yeah, definitely not the way they would have liked to start off the second half. But the intent is clear. They're going for it. The Phoenix, two subs already warming up that you can't see on screen, Cox and Taylor. They'll be looking to make an impact in this game. But they've got to keep things clean down the other end if they want to score goals as well. Some Sydney fans here in the crowd. Bit of vine time. Good to see some signs up in the stands here. And here is Courtney Vine. Move on. Frees up Talon Henneker. Across the six-yard area. Danger here for Wellington. No one on the far post for Sydney. So similar to the first half, the visitors have come out the stronger. And will furrow the brow of Paul Temple, who's already up in his, six, in his uh, technical area and encouraging the side to get back in the game. Here's Connors in the area. Shay Connors. She goes and goes and goes down. Referee had a look and said nothing wrong with it. Go forward. Go to her. Right. Exchanges passes with Hawksby at Chumet. And Ira Elliott stops things momentarily. Vine and Foster battling. Chumeth wins a corner. Good fast start from the Sky Blues in the second period. Yeah, and it shows the attacking side they are. They're 2-0 up, looking relatively comfortable on their way, approaching the top six and even top two right now, but they're not taking their foot off the gas at all. And they're playing all the football so far in the start of the second half. So remaining games for Sydney FC, Adelaide United, Canberra United and Melbourne victory as this corner is delivered. Vines on the edge again, brings it down, can't find room for a shot as Breslin takes it away from her. Now Speckmeyer charging through the middle. Robertson's off on a run trying to stay on side. Fraser is there as well. Here's Macy Fraser. Sydney back in numbers though now. Fraser. Good block by McLean. There again for Fraser. Now Brazendale, she's encouraged to shoot. And fizzled out there for Wellington, but Robertson will try and get the fire burning again. Here's Wynnum. Clever from Wynnum. Now Brazendale, there's space over on the left-hand side if they can find Manaya Elliott. They can't. Another good intervention from Breslin. Now Elliott's in the game. And it's very tight in there. They want to try and find a way out to the outer reaches of this football field at the moment. Here's Manai Elliott again. Sydney FC scramble it away. Just a bit frenetic, isn't it, at the moment, for both sides, really.
Foster. Now Breslin. Fraser. Fraser gets it back from Speckmire and shoots towards Wyman on target. But there's going to have to be some effort to beat Jada Wyman from that distance. We know she's got it in her locker, Macy Fraser. So you don't mind the intent. Jaber does well to get away from Connors. And unfortunately for Wellington, it's broken up, and here comes Talon Henneker. Only Vine ahead with her. Five back for Wellington. They should be able to defuse this okay in, too. Minus nipped it and stolen it. Across the six yard area, not cleared by Wellington, but Foster will grab it. Again, Spikmore is the target, doesn't win the head of that time. Lemon. Four towards Hawksby, lifts it into the path of Vine. And for once, Courtney Vine's control just lets her down ever so slightly. A little bit messy at the back there for Wellington. They just having trouble with those connections early in the second half. Yeah, just struggling with those first few passes on the regain, the Phoenix. Again, they wouldn't have got off to the start they wanted, but they have looked good when they've got into the attacking half, but they need to secure those first two or three passes if they want to do that. You can see bottom of screen in the green bibs, Isabel Cox and Kate Taylor just going through their warm-ups. Now Hawksby's going to have an effort from a long way out here. The clearance from Riley Foster wasn't her best work and Mackenzie Hawksby just sensed an opportunity from about 35 yards. Yeah, and again, Phoenix just not doing each other too many favours across the back, making each other struggle with each pass, and eventually it gets too much for the last person, that time it being Foster, who gives it to Hawksby. Okay. Hawksby would have liked to put that one in the back of the net, but Foster's done well to return to a line, and not too much danger there in the end. Yeah, a couple of goals this season for Mackenzie Hawksby. Got the armband today. Win him in tight spaces. Gets away from defenders. Here's Speckmeyer. Thought about a shot, now thinks about a shot. Off target from Mariana Speckmeyer, looking to add to her eight goals this season. Temple really giving Wynnum and Fraser a bit of a free role now in that number 10 role, meaning they can link up with Speckmeyer a lot more than they could in the first half. It's going to be hard work for Chauvet to mark both of those two 10s, who we know are very technical, and I'm sure it's going to be one of them that is going to unlock this game for the Phoenix if they do. Vine, off she goes. Only one thing on her mind at the moment, Courtney Vine. She's fouled, and that'll be a yellow card, I think, coming the way of Mackenzie Barry. First yellow card of the contest, and it's shown to Mackenzie Barry, her first of the season. Yeah, and it's speed to burn again from Vine. It looks a little bit innocuous, but again, Vine's away there, and I think it's the right decision from the referee. Barry just being a little bit over-assertive there and chasing down Vine. Hey, 
47th game in Phoenix Colours for Mackenzie Barry. Hawksby is lining this one up. Everybody back helping out defensively for Wellington. A third goal now would be a big moment in this game for the Sky Blues. Hawksby, delivery is good, header is good from Vine, and she makes it three. Two on the day for Courtney Vine, three for Sydney FC, who are now well clear in Porirua. And that does feel like nails in the coffin for the Phoenix. Vine again finding herself unmarked in the box. Phoenix haven't learnt their lesson from the first half. It's a free header for who we know is a world-class player, and... You know if you leave her in the box, it's going to end up in the back of the net, and the Phoenix's job just got even harder again, Piney. Nine goals this season now for Courtney Vine. She's climbing the golden boot ladder. Moves alongside Chloe Legasso and Hannah Keane from Western United. Vesna Milivojevic from Canberra. They're all on nine. Rachel Lowe has ten for victory. Serena Bolden, 11 for Newcastle. They're all chasing Michelle Heyman with 14 for Canberra, but two today for Courtney Vine and three for Sydney FC. And here's that goal again. Vine unmarked, whether it's Fraser or Breslin that loses their man. It doesn't really matter for Sydney FC and Courtney Vine, she puts that one away and Foster's rightfully upset with her defenders on that one. Not the best work of Jada Wyman either, but Ante Juric, who that landed next to, was quick to forgive his goalkeeper. So Sydney FC won the first game between these two teams back in the 2021-22 season, 3-0. That's the score by which they lead here. We're about to see a double change for Wellington with, as Katie Barrett pointed out, Isabel Cox and Kate Taylor ready to enter the freight. Macy Fraser looks to nip in and take it away from Chauvet. Nice move into space by... Taylor Ray. Everything Sydney FC are doing is nice and efficient at the moment. Giving away though, and Foster can break forward. The spaces are going to start opening up as Wellington chase the game. Be Brazendale and Elliott to be replaced by Cox and Taylor. Wellington just being pinned back by a um, very vigorous press from Sydney FC. Balls out now, the changes can be made. So Kate Taylor to take the place of Daisy Brazendale who's had a good hour here. It feels like like for like and there's Isabel Cox on for Manoa Elliott. What do you make of the changes, Katie? Yeah, I think Kate Taylor's just going to add a little bit more security. Whether they shift back to a back four, I'm not too sure. And then... Uh, Elliot making way, struggled to get into the game a little bit on that left side, and we know Cox is able to get herself into the game very quickly when she has come off the bench. Brazen Dale and Elliot as two young players have done extremely well, but it is time for a little bit of impact and a little bit of change from the team in black. Keep working, Kaylee! Yeah, the academy is functioning well when you see the likes of Brazen Dale and Elliot doing so well out there. 
a tough opposition for them to face so early in their professional careers, but they've given a good account of themselves. Isabel Cox off the shoulder and has stayed onside for the meantime. First involvement for Isabel Cox. Slides it to Wynnum. Important intervention from Lemon. And it does look like a back four. The Phoenix have changed to Breslin just playing as a solo six. Kate Taylor dropping back into it. Old familiar role of centre back. Yeah, and Jay, but more of a right back now. Great to see Kate Taylor back. She's missed the last three for injury. You can hear Ante Urich there telling his team that Wellington have gone to a 4 3 3. Here's Speckmeyer, slides it into Cox, tries to touch it off for Fraser. Go, get it back! Go, quick, quick! Drive, drive! Here's Taylor stepping into midfield. Speckmeyer has stationed herself out on Wellington's right. Fraser gets away from Lemon. Gets the cross in towards Cox. Here's Robertson. And behind by Tumith for a corner. And it's great impact from the substitute already. Cox has a handful up front. She's able to pin back McLean. Not able to get the header, but Robertson's there sniffing at the back post. Good defending in the end by Sydney, but the Phoenix aren't giving up. They need a foothold back in this game. Now would be the perfect time. Macy Fraser to take the corner. A crowded six-yard area. And that's where the ball is delivered to. And it'll be another corner headed up and over her own crossbar by Tumeth. It's a good delivery from Fraser. They've packed bodies around Wyman, but Sydney are able to clear danger. And this one towards the near post. Again, it's clear, but out to Fraser again, who's going to have another bite at the cherry. The delivery is good, and Cox has deflected it in. I'm not sure she knew a heck of a lot about it, Isabel Cox, but the ball's ended up at the back of the net, and Wellington do have a foothold back in the game. And it's immediate impact from Cox. The game is well and truly alive, and put it to a Parker back in this game. It's cleared out, falls to Fraser, who we know can put in a good delivery. It's dangerous, it's in a tough area, and Cox is just too tall for Wyman to jump over. Puts that one in the back of the net. Not the most traditional finish, but again, one heck of an impact. Yeah, that's what you want from your subs, is impact. And a third goal of the season for Isabel Cox. And it's forced to change for Ante Juric. 18 Keen will enter the fray. And it's the end of the section for Kaylee Talon Henneker. A really good starting debut for Talon Henneker. She was the architect of Sydney's second goal, diverted into her own net by Jaber. I think she'll be pretty pleased with her afternoon's work. Kaylee Talon Henneke, as will her coach on Ente Juric. Here comes Sydney looking to bite back immediately and find Patrick Hunting. Could you get there ahead of Thompson? That was the answer. Corner. And corner for Sydney FC. Burned by the new player, 18 King. Seventh corner of the afternoon for Sydney FC. 
Again, it's Mackenzie Hawksby to deliver. Again, it's a good delivery. Mackenzie Barry with the important header. This is Thompson. Jordan Thompson. That's a foul and a potential yellow card for Alyssa Winham who's also actually, I think, injured herself in the act of making that tackle. Beck Mackey. Has she gone to the pocket here? I think she... Or has she just gone for the spray? Yeah, no. So Alyssa Wynnum escapes without a yellow card, but she may have hurt herself in that challenge. Yeah, and she does well to track back, but it's impatient defending there. Again, you probably don't want a midfielder, especially as attacking mindset it is. Alyssa Wynnum defending in that situation. She brings Johnston to, uh, Thompson to ground. Escapes the yellow card there, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Another free kick for the Sky Blues. Reflected up and over. <laughs> that was Shay Connors who got the final touch there. Although it's been given as a corner, so a deflection off a Wellington defender as well. Connors was certainly that the attacking player coming to the near post. Hey, one here. So Wellington have left Mickey Robertson and Macy Fraser up on halfway, so. That's an illustration of the match situation as this corner is taken. Still there for Sydney FC. And all sorts of protests about whether it's a goal kick or a corner. Corner is the eventual decision. Shea Connors again heavily involved. Good delivery once again. I think the Phoenix are a little bit occupied on Vine there. They don't want Vine to score off another set piece. But it's Connors that finds herself free. Another corner. Again, away is the call. It's not clear at the first time of asking, but then Breslin just belts it upfield. And flag up on the far side for offside. So Wellington will have a chance to clear their lines as we approach the final quarter of the game. Hawksby seizes upon it, sets Vine away. He cuts inside Taylor, but Kate Taylor does really well to snuff it out. And by Connors, the header by Aideen Keane arriving there. Easy though for Foster. And Mickey Robertson believes she was fouled. Assistant referee agrees. Yeah, and Robertson just skips away there. It's good defending from Tumuth, who pulls Robertson back to make sure they don't have too much danger there. Here's Speckmeyer, looking to take on Lehman. She's up to the task at the moment, Abby Lehman. And Speckmeyer fouls Lehman, so it'll be an easing of the pressure valve for Sydney FC. Another sub coming for Wellington, and it's going to be Helena Errington for her fifth Wellington Phoenix appearance. She'll take the place of Alyssa Wynnum for the final 22 minutes plus stoppages here. Yeah, Errington, a talented youngster, stuck, grew up in Wellington actually, playing for Waterside Glory before going across to Western Suburbs. Spent a year at the Wellington Phoenix Academy before, having a little bit of a stint at Sporting Lisbon, but unfortunately regulations wasn't able to play there and has returned back to her hometown and she'll be looking to make an impact here. Here she is on the ball now, Helena Errington. Well, I guess if you even get the opportunity to go and spend time at Sporting Lisbon, you've got to have a bit about you. Broken up by Sydney FC, here's Ray. Chauvet. Now Keane. 18 Keane, the substitute with slightly fresher legs than Mickey Robertson. Hope Breslin's been good today. 
just as I say that, it's given away by the American. Taylor looking for the run of Cox and finds her nicely. Tracked all the way by Thompson. Isabel Cox has a goal, looking to set up a second. It's deflected into the sunshine, not cleared. Best in by Spitfire. Game well and truly on. 3 2 now in Bonnie And the crowd are back in this one tiny. I think it was Robertson, the tall figure, that actually put off Lyman here. But again, it's Cox with the impact off the bench. She's able to dance around Thompson, gets the cross off, and it is Robertson that distracts Spinkmeyer there to put that one away with a proper striker's finish. Poaching goals is what you need, especially when you were 3-0 down. They brought it back to 3-2. Do they have two more goals than them, Piney? Yeah, Mickey Robertson. The smallest player on the part, making her presence felt in the opposing six-yard area. And it fell to Speckmeyer, who gleefully lashed home her ninth goal of the season. So what a grandstand finish we're in for now. Sydney FC come again. Foster should have that one OK. As you say, Isabel Cox has made a huge impact off the bench. Scoring a goal. Being influential in the creation of the second. got to give a lot of credit to Wellington Phoenix for the way they've come back into this game. They could easily have dropped their heads against the team who's in the upper echelons of the table with genuine designs on winning the Liberty A-League, but instead they've come back and fought their way back in and are now just one goal behind. Now, I hope wrestling clattered into Courtney Vine there. Crowd not in agreement with referee Mackey's decision on that one. And it's a shake of a head from Breslin. Two players coming together. It's a little bit over-aggressive, but I think Vine's done well there to attract a foul from Breslin and take a little bit of sting out of this game where the Phoenix have looked the better side in the last 10 minutes. She's just stayed down momentarily, Courtney Vine. I wonder whether it's just taken the sting out of the game for a second or two. Second, <laughs> a round of applause and a thumbs up to Yellow Phoebe. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Who are you? She points to her name and gives a cheeky wink to Yellow Phoebe. You love it. So, Hawksby with the latest free kick. Dangerous. They're cleared by Wellington. Here's Mickey Robertson. And not cleared. Shot comes in and that'll creep in. And it is Mackenzie Hawksby, I think. Or was it Thompson? Jordan Thompson, who's drilled home the fourth goal. Either way, Sydney restore their two goal advantage. 4 2 in Potty doing now. And if the goal didn't sting, the wave to the crowd after the finish certainly did for the Yellow Fever. They've just struggled to clear the ball there. A little bit of a miscommunication between Barry and Robertson. And they've put that one away and potentially put the game away as well. Second goal of the season for Jordan Thompson. And so Wellington have it all to do again now.
think they have to keep playing the same way. And it looks as though they will. Here's Harrington. Speckmeyer. Lovely turn by Cox. They're keeping the crowd involved, Wellington Phoenix. Steps into midfield with the football. Gets it back from Speckmeyer, who thought she was fouled. The referee said, we've got the ball play on. <laughs> Robertson. <laughs> running at Chumeth. Mickey Robertson lines it up. And what a save by Wyman in the second attempt as well. The second save was probably the better of the two as Errington was lurking around. And it's great play by Robertson, who cuts inside, gets a shot off. Errington arrives on Wyman's toes, but not able to put that one away. The Phoenix aren't giving up. They've shown that they're a resilient team. But again, you'd really like to see chances like that find their way into the back of the net. Excellent goalkeeping, particularly the second one from Jada Wyman. Cox again, she's been the catalyst for Wellington's comeback, Isabel Cox. Another change coming for Wellington. It's going to be Zoe McMeekin taking the place of Michaela Foster, who hands the captain's armband over to Mackenzie Ferry. In fact, no, they've, they've, they've decided it's not Foster. It's Mickey Robinson who's going to go off. So, Michaela Foster takes the armband back. Mickey Robinson's day is done. Zoe McMeekin's into the action. by Sydney have seen Vine crimes high, not going to get that one. Kate Taylor will clear up the right-hand side. Speckmeyer's off on a chase. Lemon is there ahead of her. Mick Meekin's first chance to get into an attacking position. Tori Chumeth in no mood to allow that to happen. Well, the last three matches between these two have all been one nil score lines. It's been anything but today. Yeah, it's certainly kept the crowd happy in terms of the goals, but they would have liked to see a couple more to the Phoenix, who again looked like they were back in this game, but it's it's starting to run out of time, I'm afraid, and they'll need to find one soon. It looks like they've switched Taylor to the right side and Jaber inside, which It'll be interesting to see how that one plays out, what Taylor's role becomes in that right-back position. Yeah, he's played all the cards in his deck now, Paul Temple. McMeekin, Taylor, Cox and Errington all into the action off the bench here, it's Taylor. McMeekin just got it caught under her feet momentarily. Vine nips in, she's ever present. Just always a threat. And uh, Kate Taylor runs into Courtney Vine, who gets up with a rueful smile. It's been a running battle between Courtney Vine and Yellow Fever today. 
Not sure who's enjoying it more. Yeah, she's an absolute star, Courtney Vine, and I, I'm guessing she thrives off moments like this. And so do the Yellow Fever. They're having a lot of fun. Courtney Vine's having a lot of fun. It's a great game to be part of. Connor squares it back. She was on site. And we have the crowd attendance confirmation for Pondor Park. There are 1,010 of you here today. So thank you for coming out this morning. You're welcome to be here for me. Isabel Cox unable to keep that one in. Speaking of substitutes, Ante Juric still has two at his disposal. Sienna Saveska and Darcy Malone are his remaining outfield subs. Mariana Speckmeyer with good industrial defending from the attacker. Plays it forward. Isabel Cox is going to put pressure on McLean. Charlotte McLean does well to bring it away, but Macy Fraser's in the action. So is Speckmeyer again. Wellington desperate to try and get the ball and fashion another attacking move. Foul by Chauvet on Fraser. Plenty forward for Hope Breslin to aim at. Falls to Barry. She steps through. Foul by Vine. No. Off go Sydney FC through 18 key. She gets away from a would-be tackler and Errington into the path of Mackenzie Hawksby just about. Wellington just desperate to get things going now. Forced back by Sydney FC. Make it tough, Jay. Think Abby Lemons made a pretty good fist of left back, hasn't she? It may well be that she gets the opportunity because Kirsty Fenton's injury looks very serious. Maybe Abby Lemon might find herself starting at left back in future matches for Sydney FC. Yeah, she's looked very calm and composed for a young player, only 21 years old. It's it's never easy for a winger to go back into fullback, but she hasn't looked out of place at all, especially considering how dangerous the Phoenix have been in wide areas. Still time for the home side. Cleared away by... Sydney FC at the back. Breslin. She's got Yeva. Yeva rather. And into the box it goes. McMeekin climbs high. Hacked away by Lemon. Wellington win it back quickly. McMeekin again. Fraser. Cox. Cox being forced wide, but slides the shot through a crowd of bodies. Not a lot of power, and Jada Wyman was untroubled. Yeah, it's again Cox with the impact. You do wonder what this game would have looked like had Cox started this match. She's added a lot of co contact to McLean. McLean's been amongst it as much as she can, which has freed up players like Speakmeyer in and around the box as well. Kate Taylor with a little other option apart from to pass that ball out. Sydney FC in no hurry now, and why would they be with a two goal buffer and six minutes to go? Crowd urging Wellington forward again. Cox gets away from. Thompson, who seemed to impede her, and Isabel Cox wanted to take that up with Jordan Thompson just for a moment. The referee has 
a message for her as well and it's a yellow card. Yeah, there's nothing more frustrating for a forward than being held back when you're rightfully away. But it's clever defend defending from Thompson. She knows what she needs to do there. Keep Cox out of the attack. And if it give, means giving away a set piece and a yellow card, so be it. Third yellow card of the Liberty A-League season for Jordan Thompson. It's Kate Taylor to take the resulting free kick. Launches it long. Well dealt with by Sydney FC. Is it going to fall to Foster? No. Courtney Vines back defending. No, she's up there on the ends of that clearance, rather. And now Mackenzie Hawksby sees Riley Foster off her line. Tiana Jaber, though, was well aware. And Mackenzie Hawksby has stayed down this time. Maybe just jarred. Well, she's holding her head there, so maybe she fell heavily. Well, she's just looking OK, just Mackenzie Hawksby. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's hard to see what happens there. It's good defending from Jaber. Hawksby's claiming to have hit a hit on the way down. I, it's off screen, so I can't quite tell, but Hope Breslin doesn't seem too impressed, and the Sydney players don't seem too impressed with Hope Breslin's disagreements as well. But again, just taking a little bit of sting out of this game, Sydney will just want to see this one out now and not give Phoenix any chance. So just a reminder, we're back here on Wednesday night, 5 o'clock kickoff. Wellington plate, Adelaide United. And then they're away at Canberra, excuse me, Canberra on Sunday night. Sydney FC host Adelaide United the same night. It's a bit of a uh, quick check on Mackenzie Hawksby by Sydney FC's team doctor. There's a few words exchanged there, I think, between Mackenzie Hawksby and Hope Reslin. A shake of the head there by Mackenzie Hawksby. I think she's going to be OK to come back on. Breslin back in the action. She's been heavily involved in that number six role this afternoon, Hope Breslin. Barry's pass can't find McMeekin. Time ticking away for Wellington. Just a couple of minutes plus stoppages for them to find a way back. And the EFC continue to press. Wellington look to combat it. Speckmeyer. Taylor with a misplaced pass. Can Vine take advantage? Here's Courtney Vine. Runs across the front of Breslin. Taylor's there. Vine's still there. And a foul by Courtney Vine on Kate Taylor. They want to get going quickly, Wellington, and do. Errington plays it forward. Cox is off in hot pursuit. Cleared by McLean. <laughs> Sydney FC scramble it away. We're into the final minute of regulation. Foster helps it forward towards Cox. It's there for Speckmeyer. She's fouled. Free kick coming the way of Wellington. 
and it's a tough challenge from Hawksby there. Just, just goes to stop Speakmeyer, whatever means she needs. So Sydney FC have lined up their wall about a yard from where the free kick is. Referee Beck Mackey will use the magic spray to show them where they need to be. Five extra minutes minimum, meantime, have been displayed on the board of our fourth official, Michaela Ryan. Sydney want to make their final couple of subs. That'll have to wait until after this free kick. Almost certainly a shot at goal from one of Hope Breslin or Macy Fraser. The crowd lend their vocal encouragement. Referee Beck Mackey just making sure everything's fine to go. Fraser shoots, Wyman saves. Foul by Matt Perry on Shay Connors. Sydney going to make yep, these changes. Sorry. I think they are. So Sienna Saveska and Darcy Malone are going to play the final few minutes. Saveska is going to take the place of Shay Connors, I think, who was herself a substitute. And Darcy Malone will come on for Taylor Ray. Yeah, Shay Connors still on the comeback from injury, hasn't played big minutes yet so far. So you're wondering if she was already on managed minutes before making a little bit more of an early appearance than Sydney FC would have liked. And Taylor Ray making way, who we know is going to be absolutely pivotal come finals football for Sydney FC. Yeah, they're very nearly there in this one, Sydney FC. Just have to negotiate the final few minutes of this one and they'll take all three points back on the plane with them. No time left for Wellington to do anything other than just throw bodies forward now. Errington does well to get away from Chauvet. McMeekin has Foster outside her. Keane gets it clear for Sydney FC. Javis steps into midfield. Pursued all the way by Vine. Breaks to Speckmeyer. Kate Taylor has become a right winger all of a sudden. Does well, Kate Taylor. How's the pass? It's not bad. The shot's good as well from Errington. She turns it back across the six-yard area where she's had a couple of really good opportunities. Helena Errington off the bench today. Yeah, all substitutes for the Wellington Phoenix making a massive impact. But it might be too little too late for the team in black. Some tired legs out there now, but Wellington urged forward again into the final. One of the five the minimum added minutes. Fraser still full of running. Belted forward. Courtney Vine is all alone up top for Sydney FC. One final chance, perhaps, for the for the Phoenix. Forward by Breslin. Here's Cox. And out comes Wyman.
And there's that cutback again from Kate Taylor. Falls to Errington. It's good technique to get a shot off that goal, but you've got to avoid Wyman a little bit more. She's a good figure in goal. Has made many key saves for Sydney FC in the past, and that shot doesn't trouble her quite enough. So Sydney FC have successfully wound the clock down here as we tick over five extra minutes. We're in the hands of referee Beck Mackey now. One final chance, perhaps. And it was Saveska arriving in Wellington's penalty area. Still time to play, says our referee. Yeah, one of you. Good. McMeekin maybe with the final chance to set something up for Wellington. Cleared by McLean. Quick check of the watch from Beck Mackey, who's happy for us to go a little bit longer. go to the top of the Liberty A-League ladder. They've come to Wellington and collected all three points, but they were made to work for it. Courtney Vine, a star as per usual for the Sky Blues. Late goal from Cox and Spetmeyer made it interesting, but Thompson's goal restored the two-goal buffer, and that's how we finish at Potidua Park. Wellington Phoenix 2, Sydney FC 4. And Well, it's an entertaining afternoon's football. If you were a neutral, you'd be uh, fairly happy with the way you spent your afternoon, Katie. Yeah, plenty of goals and plenty of star performances, but it's Courtney Vine that we have.